Every year it seems like people just can't get enough practice exercises involving pointers. Uh, maybe that's because pointers seem like a little bit of a scary subject at first. I really love pointers, but yeah, it can be a bit jarring when you first see them. Uh, so let's go and ask our colleague to generate some practice exercises uh, today. So I think because usually the practice questions that we do involving pointers are really code writing questions. I would sort of like to do some code writing questions, but I think I'm just going to ask for practice questions as opposed to programming exercises this time. Uh, I just learned about pointers in my C programming course. Pointers are great. Um, can you generate three practice questions involving pointers? So I said practice questions. So we'll see what it comes up with. Uh, okay, so let's just look at its response. Of course, I'd be happy to help you come up with some practice questions. Okay, so actually I asked it to come up with some practice questions, but fair enough. Question number one. Um, uh, okay, <laughs> so it's decided to put the question inside a block of code, so it just sort of scrolls off. Um, okay, well, well, we'll give it a try. I'm going to hit copy code. We'll head back over here to the template. We'll paste that in, and then finally I'll get a chance to read it. Um, all right, so exercise. Declare an integer variable named num with a value of 42. I'd like to believe that ChatGPT chose 42 because it sort of has a sense of humor, but I don't know. Um, okay, so int num equals 42. So I think I've now done, I'm gonna call this step one. Um, step two, uh, then declare a pointer variable named ptr that points to the address of num. Okay, so uh, int star ptr equals uh, arrow pointing at num. And one thing I'll observe that's sort of neat about this is, um, in this course, we have a lot of shorthand terminology that we use. So you may have noticed just now that I even read the ampersand as arrow pointing at. Um, and it's, it's worth considering that depending on where and when you learn C, different bits of notation or shorthand are used. So notice how it says here, that points to the address of num. I think that's a little bit wordy. I actually would write this, if I were writing this exercise myself, I would probably just say points to num because we understand what it means for a pointer variable to contain a value that points to something. Um, but it's worth considering that in a lot of contexts, we do talk about the value inside the pointer variable being the address of something. And although we already know that in this course, um, we'll notice ChatGPT is actually saying that explicitly. All right, so finally, print the value of num. I guess that's step number three. Um, print the value of num using both the variable and the pointer. This is sort of a nice exercise to ease us into this. So the value of num is, and then I'll print out the value of num with uh, using the variable itself. And then we'll just try that again using the value of the pointer. And I'll just sketch a quick diagram here because it's always good to use a diagram when we're working with pointers. There's my variable num. It's an int. It's got the value 42. Uh, here's my, whoops, that looks disgusting. Um, here's my variable ptr. ptr has type int star, which we read as pointer to int. And the value of ptr is this arrow here. Um, and as I mentioned a minute ago, formally, obviously, inside the computer, the computer's memory isn't a tank of actual arrows. This is a visualization device that we use. The actual thing inside the pointer variable, as we know, is some kind of cryptic numerical value that represents the address of this variable num. Okay, so I'm going to print that out. Um, value of num, I'm going to say via ptr, uh, is this. And then I'll print out star ptr, which we would read in this course as start at the variable ptr and then follow one arrow. That's what the star means. Okay, so we'll save that. We'll try running it. Practice pointer is 1, the value of num is 42, the value of num via PTR is also 42. Okay, so to be honest, that I don't think that was a very challenging exercise. Maybe it's a good way of getting ourselves into the right mindset. Let's take a look at what it came up with next. Question number two, oh, pointer arithmetic. That is something we haven't covered yet. You can even see it's using that word array, which is next week's topic. So I'm just going to skip that one. Um, question number three, uh, pointer and function. Uh, and then... It doesn't look like this is going to be a problem, so we'll just hit copy, although it's sort of weird that it decided to put these things in text boxes. Uh, all right, so we'll go back over here. I'm just going to uh, replace what I had a minute ago because it was so straightforward. I'm just going to replace it with this. Um, write a function called swap that takes two integer pointers as arguments and swaps the value that they point to. 
Um, okay, there we go. Uh, and then I'm just gonna go delete everything inside of main here. All right, so I, I need to make a function called swap that takes two integer pointers as arguments. Now, I read this phrase integer pointer to mean int star, so pointer to integer. Uh, and it's this is technically valid, so saying integer pointer. I, I prefer to say pointer to int because, at least in my head, it helps me understand better sort of the architecture of the type. So pointer to int, that's what the, the type means. But yes, we could say integer pointer. So it takes two integer pointers as arguments and swaps the values that they point to. Um, then in the main function, declare two integer variables a and b with the values 5 and 10. I don't know about that 5, although 10 sounds good. Um, and then call the swap function with the addresses of a and b. So addresses meaning pointers to the variables a and b. And then print the values of a and b after that function call. Uh, okay, so it wants me to do this in a particular order. It says do the function and then write the main function. Um, normally, and you probably want to do this too on a midterm or something, I actually would probably write the main function first. I, I would declare the variables, I would call the function, print them out, and then I'd write the function later because at that point I'd sort of have an idea of what the function's supposed to do. But I'm going to try doing it in the same order that it gave me the exercise. Um, okay, so I, I want to make a, a function called swap and it takes two integer pointers as arguments. So I won't worry about the return type just yet. So I'm gonna, I'll just put a placeholder here, some question marks for my return type. Um, so I'm gonna have a function called swap that takes two integer pointers. I'll call them P and Q because those are good uh, placeholder names for pointers. Um, so it takes two integer pointers as arguments. And the way that I view this is basically when I get into the swap function, I guess what I'm gonna have are these two variables p and q, and so they're both of type int star, and they're gonna point off into the distance at something. So I don't know what they point to. They, they point to some int value somewhere off in the distance. And I guess the idea here, I'm gonna use my own uh, numerical values for this. The idea here is that if the function begins and p points to this thing and q points to this thing, then I want to arrange that when the function is over, the values in these two boxes get swapped. So obviously um, this function called swap, uh, it's supposed to be swapping something, so exchanging values. I, I interpret that to mean the things the pointers are currently pointing to, so these things. Uh, we could try and just swap the values of the pointers, but that would make no difference. That would have no effect whatsoever outside of the swap function. So that's why I view it this way. Um, so I'm gonna, I'll just clean that up a bit. So if I just, I'll sketch out the salient part of that diagram. So I've got my pointers P and Q, and they are each of type pointer to int. And they point off at something in the distance. And I'm actually not going to draw what they point to because I want to think only about what I have on hand. I also now want to observe that it's pretty clear to me now that I don't need this function to have any return type uh, or to return any value at all. It can have a return type of void because it sounds like all the work that's being done is being done using these two pointers that were passed in. I should also add, I mean, maybe this is obvious. You may have already seen this. This exercise is an absolutely stock pointer exercise. Like this this is the oldest trick in the book. Arguably, you open a C programming textbook and you take a look at the very first exercise in the section on pointers, it is probably this one. So I, I will admit that I, I, I already know the solution to this. I've done this exercise like a million times. Um, in fact, we may have done this in class by now. So anyway, uh, I'm, I'm trying to make it, I'm trying to approach this as if I don't already know the answer, but yes, I, I do sort of already know the answer to this. So I'm gonna be swapping the values of these two variables using only the pointers P and Q. And there are a variety of clever ways I could do this because it's such a, a ubiquitous exercise. A lot of people actually, I don't know, challenge themselves to try and come up with really clever solutions that, that involve very little code or something or no extra variables. I don't know if I have the patience for that and neither should you, especially if this is a midterm question or something, you've got other things to do. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna make a new variable, we'll just call it temp and I will store into that variable whatever p currently points to. So star p means start at p follow an arrow, which means um, I'll just, uh, whoops, I'll just go and maybe adjust my little drawing here. So P points to something up here. I wanna get whatever's in this box. And I'm gonna just stick it in a new variable that I create of type int called temp. 
Uh, and so I take this question mark and I put it down here, okay? Um, and then the idea there is that now I've got a copy of whatever was originally in P so that I can overwrite P with something else. So now I'm gonna say, okay, take the value that was uh, currently stored at the other end of the arrow in Q. So start at Q, follow an arrow, and then take this thing, so two question marks, I guess, and then store that into P. So go follow the, the arrow from Q and then grab the thing at the other end and then take whatever's in there and store it in the, uh, what happens in the place I get to if I start at P and I follow an arrow. All right, and then I can take the thing I saved up um, from earlier, so the value of my variable temp, and I can store that into the destination of the pointer Q. All right, so I, I think that's that's what I need for this. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll just uh, delete my diagram there. I'm gonna go and write the main function that it wants. Okay, so the main function wants me to declare two integer variables a and b, and they must have these two values for some reason. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna print out, uh, it looks like uh, I don't have to print out the values of a and b until after the function call. So I'll just write this print statement and then, and then put it down below. So I print out the values of a and b, and then in the meantime, I call the swap function um, with the addresses of A and B. So the term address of here is referring to the ampersand operator. So what we read casually as arrow pointing at A formally would be address of A. Okay, so what I'm gonna pass in is gonna be ampersand A and ampersand B. And as we know with pointers, it's often good to do a little bit of dimensional analysis. So I take a look at um, this uh, argument that I'm passing in and I, I investigate its type. Okay, well the type of A is int, which means the type of ampersand A has to be int star. And then I ask, is this what the swap function expects? And I go to the swap function and the first argument has type int star, so this makes sense. Um, although that doesn't mean my code is correct, certainly that's one way I can validate that I'm not doing anything completely absurd at this point. All right, and the same thing with ampersand B. Ampersand B has type int star. The second argument to swap is of type int star. All right, so I will now go and compile this and I'll run it. And we can see that when I'm finished uh, that uh, the printf statement at the end prints 10 and five. So the values in the value inside A and the value inside B, they have been exchanged. Um, and I'll go back over to, my, to visit my colleague here. And as I mentioned, I'm skipping over this question number two because it's, it requires arrays, which is a topic we haven't seen yet. Um, this this um, phrase pointer arithmetic is something we are going to cover in this course. We're just gonna come back to it after we've had a chance to talk about arrays for a while. So I'm gonna leave this one and then we'll assume it'll give us this exercise again when I ask again in a few weeks um, to do some array exercises. Um, so I'm not gonna bring that up with it because I don't wanna hurt its feelings. I'll just say, those look great. Um, can I have three more? Absolutely. Here are three more practice questions involving pointers. I, I really don't know where it's gotten the idea to, to do this, but whatever. Um, all right, so just like before, I might have to be a bit selective. Um, nothing looks inherently wrong with this exercise, at least you know, the one sentence of it that I can see. Question number five, okay, I know what this term means, dynamic memory allocation. That is the topic we will address in, I guess, the last two weeks of class. So we're not gonna touch this one today. And then question number six, pointers and strings, or pointer and strings. Well, strings are something related to arrays that we're gonna cover in, I guess, late October. I keep saying this. We're definitely going to do it. We're not gonna do it today, though. So I'm gonna skip over what it's given me as question five and question six. And if you ask ChatGPT for your own practice questions, maybe by watching these videos, you now have a pretty good, maybe a pretty good idea of what you need to skip over, because if it gives you a practice exercise that makes absolutely no sense to you, you know, you might be tempted to say, oh great, I must know nothing about this course, but hopefully by now you can see that sometimes it just gives you exercises that require advanced material. And it's a bit difficult if you don't know the advanced material to know what you're supposed to skip over and when it's suggesting an exercise that is at your level, but that maybe is just a little bit over your head. Um, but you can see I'm gonna skip over questions five and six because we just haven't covered that material yet. So I'm gonna do question number four, or I'm gonna try to, and then I guess after doing that, we will have done three whole exercises on pointers. And so I, I guess that'll, that'll be enough for this video. So we'll head back over here. Um, I guess that was, I'm going to keep that swap code. So we'll go over and change files. I'm just going to um, queue up my new compile command here. Here we go. Great. So I'll paste in the exercise that ChatGPT gave me. There it is. And we'll just, um, now I've got to read it to make sure that it isn't using advanced material. So the exercise was called 
pointer to pointers, and I think it's going to mean pointers to pointers, but whatever. Declare an integer variable num. Okay, again with a num, fine. Um, so I'll declare an integer variable num with a value of 75. I'm going to number my steps. There we go. Um, then declare a pointer variable ptr1 that points to num. Okay, so we're, we're pretty much doing the same thing we did in the earlier exercise. I, I, from what I can see skimming over this, this is going to be another pretty basic comprehension exercise, but why not? We, it, it suggested it. We might as well try it out. So PTR1 contains, uh, it points to num. This time it didn't use the phrase address of, although it's going to use it in step number two or step number three. So I guess I should sketch out what I now have. So over here, I'll just draw a quick diagram. So there's int num and it's got the value 75. And then I've just created this new variable called ptr1, and it is of type int star because, so the, it doesn't say this in the requirements, but it's pretty obvious that if I want it to point to num, if I want it to contain arrow pointing at num, it's gonna have to have type int star. So the type of num is int, a pointer to num would have type int star. Uh, okay, step three, declare another pointer, ptr2, um, that points to the address of, uh, P of PTR1. So uh, as I said before, I would probably just say points to PTR1, or I would say contains the address of PTR1. For reasons that are pretty pedantic, I actually find this points to the address of to sort of be incorrect. Um, it either points to PTR1 or it contains the address of PTR1. It can't point to the address of. Really, it's going to be pointed to the address of num if we want to be absolutely technical about it. So I'm going to make a variable called PTR2 down here. There it is. Um, and I want it to point to PTR1. And then its type is going to be int star star. Now, the reason I know that is because what it points to is of type int star. And of course, if I'm pointing to something of type int star, um, the, the type of the pointer is going to be the same type I'm pointing to plus one extra star. So int star star. Uh, and so to, to actually create that, okay, first I need to give ptr2 type int star star. And then I need to, um, uh, on the right-hand side, I need to assign an uh, arrow pointing at ptr1. And then it says print the value of num using both ptr1 and ptr2. So don't use the variable directly, just use the two pointers. Okay, so I'll try that out. Um, value of num via ptr1 is going to be some number. Uh, okay, so how do I get to my variable num via ptr1? Well, my variable ptr1 is here. I follow one arrow. Okay, so I'll do star ptr1. And then uh, the same thing, value of num via PTR2. Okay, so same story. I'm going to print out an integer. And to get there from PTR2, I have to do PTR2, follow an arrow, follow an arrow. So that'll be, that'll look like this. I start at, whoops, I hit page up by accident. Uh, I start at PTR2, I follow an arrow, I follow an arrow. All right, so we'll try that out. All right, and so I was able to retrieve the value of my variable num via both. Uh, admittedly, a pretty easy exercise, or I mean, easy is not the right word for it, a pretty straightforward exercise, mostly comprehension. This was essentially the first example that we did in class of using pointers with two stars in their type, but whatever, it suggested the exercise, and it is good to brush up on the fundamentals, I guess.